You want to see the car later? Uh, I just couldn't take the passenger in this car now. Look at that. Punch his head. And take on those dresses. No, it was the street dress. Right. A few more bags. Bags are gone. <laughs> no, we're off. Children will be down here now, going right through the hall. And they'll be climbing the ladders and up in Cinderella's coach. God knows what they do. Katrina rang now, she's a fairy godmother, she's a toothache. So I'm saying, you, well, you have to go to the dentist, she can't have the toothache during the battle. Really. I don't know what she expects me to do, like, why she had to tell me. Because I can't cure her toothache. <laughs> oh dear. She's terrified of the dentist. Look at that day now, wouldn't you need a paddle made to cheer you up? Have to get in here now, do you? I'm not very good at parking them. People say you get a you get a double deck of bus. Shit, I'm way back now. Go on, sure. It's so good. Biggest part of it, I think, because when people volunteer, they're volunteering their work for free and they're doing it because they love doing it. You know, they're down there to all hours of the night, like Hammond and Saul. And <coughs> so, that, that's what really keeps theirs. The Padamine's theirs because they, they volunteer to, to make it happen. Like, and like this year, we have Canning Dumworth was a principal in the Padamine years ago. And now her great granddaughter's in the ferry scene. So I think that's amazing. So there's not a person in Remelton that hasn't been in it or involved in it or uh, not just. Wonderful. It is a real big local thing. Uh -huh. <gasps> now that is gaudy. That's what I call an ugly sister. Fit for an ugly sister. <laughs> Look. <laughs> oh, class, Anne. Oh my God. Are you? The colours <gasps> are. They are absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. And was I only brought these to Anne yesterday. And and look at that now, bro. Shadows. Well, wow. Tommy and James will be delighted. Must be shame with the cook. Wow. Good he took on that was good. That's so what did he take out? All you know the admission and stuff, we don't need that on the programme. But stay in here. Oh god, eh? And Jean, what are your memories of that first one? Would you believe, I think I was living in the house in the Bray, you know, the Georgian house at the time, and I just remember there was very few cameras about, not like nowadays, and uh, my uncle had a camera so I got a photograph taken in my fairy dress, and then a man called Larry Doherty from the Dairy Journal, he was the photographer, he came out and took photos of the entire cast. And, so those photos were very precious, because not everybody had cameras then. I always squeezed in some way or other. Even when I was doing exams, like, and I wasn't allowed to go in, somebody would have taken sick or would have had to go in to do a part in the chorus or a little speaking part. I always managed to squeeze in. Oh, it's a great clean thing. I mean, it's, everyone pulls together, and the chorus work 
separate, the children seem separate. All the different elements then come together. And it's amazing when they all join up how, you know, how it all makes sense then. Just leave your right arm up at your head and just this sun. All right? And we'll do the other wee bits to the music. There's only two other wee bits then. <coughs> <laughs> right, everybody sing now. I've seen the young, young people come through as uh, children and now it's frightening when you look back and see photographs that you took of those children on stage that they're now members of the senior cast and, and chorus, you know, so it's, it's satisfying to see that ha happen. And the, well, there's, there's nothing that I know that, that, that's like it in the, in the North West, uh, you know, the community spirit that exists in Remelton is unique. It really is, uh, and uh, the way that the community pulls together, it's it's un unparalleled uh, in any other. I've worked in other pandemics and Derry and Strabane, and the whole, the way that people enjoy this as a social outlet, uh, they enjoy one another's company, and they always have, and year after year it's a chance. When I walk through that door, um, Early, early age January, it's like I've never been away. You know, it's uh, old friends and up for a bit of crack. And... My name is Doreen Gill, and this is my 30th year of involvement with costumes for the Remelton Pantomime. I live in Arizona now. Um, I became involved this year when I got an email from Jean around about the end of November, I think it was, and she said to me, I wonder if you could get some crystal voile. So I sent her an email back uh, saying, yes, I'm sure I can. Is this for Cinderella? Um, if so, would you like me to make Cinderella's dress and the princess costume? So the email came out, oh yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> there was no other colour than gold because this was the golden anniversary. So it all had to be gold and it all had to be glittery. Packaging them up was quite funny because I was conscious of you know the long journey and I knew that there would be excitement when, when they arrived. And uh, I thought that Jean would open them at home, you know, and I was I was so, delighted when she said the box arrived this morning and I managed to contain myself all day um, taking it to the hall tonight for everybody to open it together. James, how many years have you played the dame? 30, 34, that's about 35. 
Can they, no interruption? No. Always. Longer, a longer a woman than a man. Just say your name. Jared McFadden. Um, involved in the pantomime since the early 70s. Started off in the children's scene. For about... <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. My name is Jared McFadden. I have been in the pantomime since the early 70s, starting in the children's scene. Then took up in the children's scene for maybe seven or eight years. Took a break then, back into the chorus when I was 15. I was in the chorus for about 12, 13 years. And then got involved in the production side of the children and the chorus. And I've also done a few small principal parts. Well, we say every year this is our last, but there's just a draw with the pantomime. You just want to come back. It's not that you have to come back, but you want to come back and help out. Well, we never turn a child away. And this year, our biggest group is 50 children in one group, and we have four groups. So we're averaging about 170, 180 children in total in four different groups. I think a lot of us do with pride in our mountain. Whoever's been involved from the start, they just keep coming back, and it's, the voluntary work is just brilliant. Like you know, and it, definitely with the help that we have, and as I said previously, like you know, generations keep coming back, and they want to help. Like you know, it's like Cannon now, Martin Duffy. He's in the principals now for years, and Martin was with me in the children's scene, with me in the chorus, and now his daughters have gone through the children's scene, and now for the first year his daughter Erica is in the chorus. So that's really what keeps it going, I think. We have 20 in the chorus this year, and they'll hopefully progress to principal parts and help them behind the scenes. That's just the way it, the way it is like, and people do want to help, and if they can continue to do so, it will go on. You're to go up to Minari's, Tommy. No good, sir. <laughs> not. That's watch his back, watch his back. That'll help me back. Right. That's no good, Tommy. Okay. Is my backside big in this spring? It is. <laughs> not that hat, Dermot. No. Wrong hat, bowler hat. <laughs> bowler hat. I'll take my boy here, Jim. Right, that's it. Right. Two of John Harkin, and I've been doing pantomimes for about 10 years, I think. I think it's 10 years. Uh. Well, <laughs> I think the fella that used to do it, he went to England, as far as I know. So he couldn't do it, but there have been a lot of people before me doing it, you know. There have been a long line of scene painters in the panto. Well, Tony sort of gives me a rough idea of what he wants, and I sort of design it then. Uh, I used to design it very detailed on paper, but now I just, I don't really do that because I have the patience. <laughs> I, just, I have it on the computer, <laughs> this computer here, so uh, I can just go ahead and just do it. I have it like I can see it in my mind before, I, so I sort of know the perspective and composition, you know. Uh, well, I like doing the landscapes, as you see, the, the hulls and sort of the trees, sort of the distant hulls, sort of sort of sound and music type scenery, <laughs> you know, and uh, I prefer doing that rather than doing buildings because you have to a bit more detail with buildings because you have to sort of do more straight lines, do you know what I mean, especially palaces or something like that.
My name is Tony Boyce and I've been working on the Bantaman for uh, since 1960 actually, you know. And uh, I was actually in the chorus in 1960 and I, I think I give a hand with the props as well, like you know, under the supervision of, of Jim Burney. And since that, I've been working backstage all the time, making props and so on, like, you know, and stage manager during the pantomime, like, you know, so on. There's so much work involved that you sort of dread it coming along, like, you know, but at the same time, once you get started on it, that, that comes easy enough. Then, like. People always like to, to see a pantomime on, like, you know, so that it, every year. Like we missed a few years, all right, but uh, um, for some reason or another, like you know, in between, so we did. But we always started it up again, like you know. So, like the coach and and uh, that will be the main thing, the transformation from the the uh, cinders uh, into our ballroom gown, like you know, and then the, the the transformation of the coach, like you know, from the pumpkin into a coach, like you know. and also helping out training the children. There's not as many boys this year as there normally would be. The last time we did this show we had about 10, 11, 12 fellas in it, but this year we only have four. I think the future is very promising and I really do believe that the local young people like will keep it going, keep the tradition going. Five days to go now, and it's looking good. It's looking good for us. Danny, how are you fixed? Ah, well, I'm just glad it's nearly here now. You practice for a wee while, and then you look forward to it coming around. And this day, it's time to put the show on and have a bit of fun. Like, right, my name is Mickey McHugh, and I've been involved with the Panto for over 40, 40 years. And I've won another funny man, yes. <laughs> Pat and Mick went down. Pat was going down the street, and he saw Mick in the garden, and he says. Max says, where are you going, Pat? Pat says, I'm going to the doctor. I don't like the look of the wife. Max says, hold on a minute and I'll be with you. I can't stand the sight of mine. <laughs> Granddaughter Rachel, she, she's, uh, she's uh, in it this year and she's uh, uh, singing a song too in it. And uh, uh, she, she likes it too. My name is Damien Duffy and I play in the Prince. Uh, I've been playing the Prince since 1990. Me now, because this is the last time you'll ever, ever see me. Well, tell the camera that. Um, <laughs> right. Why is this going to be this, your last? This is a public uh, announcement. 33 years. This is my last year. And uh, do you say that every year, James? No, this is the final year this year. And why have you decided to throw in your wig so a my, brassiere? My brassiere has a middle-aged spread. <laughs> I'm starting to sag. <laughs> it's time to hang up the bra. 
You'll probably change your mind and no, come back again next not. year. So take a look now and you'll never see it again. Bye. <laughs> uh, my name is Maggie Cullen. Cinderella. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of people involved in it and a lot of people put good work into it, so it will be a sin to say go. I think it will be here for a while yet. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I, I've been fighting a battle with myself for the past number of years uh, about being under the towel, you know. That's, that's, that I can say, but all honestly, like I, I find it hard to get away in the evening, leave a fire, come in here, and back out again. It's just, it's just a big, a big effort for me now, after all. And I'll be pleasantly surprised if it keeps going. Mm -hmm. I will, because, I mean, Jane has been wonderful to do what she has done, and Tony Boyce, like, started with me when, when we, in 1960, in the chorus, first year, and he started with me, and he is now doing an awful responsible job here, you know, and, and without him, and without Patsy, and Mickey McHugh, of course, you know, uh, I think, I think what they've done is just unthinkable for, for the community and in this, in this uh, society. It's been just great. The night, when, it's, when the opening night is over, and you know then that everybody has something to wear, you know that everybody's, that it went okay. I am wrecked, I'm sorry. Totally wrecked. She's the oldest. <laughs> Break a leg, folks. Break a leg.
Fight Against All Odds has been a commercial and critical success. We will go on. We have invested wisely for future generations, and that is as it should be. But it is the soul and the spirit of the pandemic that causes it to endure.